adventures Come with me, we're gonna head out west We're gonna head out to the country Then tomorrow let's get the boat And go fishing in the open sea uh, Grab your gear and meet me here Bring the whole family team Mad Mullet Adventures team Mad Mullet Adventures team Mad Mullet Adventures team Mad Mullet Adventures G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Ocean to Outback. On the previous episode you would have seen, seen um, we went over to a, a gun store and uh, purchased a, a beautiful Tinker 204 and um, we're going to uh, explain the story behind the, uh, the Valkyrie 224 Down Under and, and how it came about. So I was on YouTube like uh, most of us guys do, sitting there typing away and up in the little search engine uh, I seen a little uh, story about the 224 Valkyrie and uh, I pressed play and uh, had a good watch and it spiked my interest and I uh, approached my old man showed him the uh, the footage and uh, my old man being my old man of course if he likes it he's got to buy it but unfortunately there's no uh, Valkyries in Australia at the moment. They're only a new release in the United States. And uh, the reason why it became so, um, I'd say, interesting for us is the stats that this caliber can actually put out. So the stats are pretty interesting and uh, my old man Grant, he knows all about them. Yes, I uh, have gone deeply into this and uh According to the stats out of America, 24 inch barrel with a 90 grain projectile. The projectile is leaving the barrel at 2,700 feet per second, which is not super fast. But owing to the shape of the bullet at 1,300 yards is still supersonic and traveling at 12,070 feet per second. From what I understand, it is the first sporting rifle to be supersonic out to 1,300 yards. Now in saying this, um, we had a bit of a discussion and um, we thought, oh, let's see if we can make this rifle, seeing there's none in Australia. So we got put on to the legends that are the Swan, the Swan Company and uh, they've got a, a pretty good reputation when it comes to uh, barrel making and just overall knowledge on rifles in general. Now um, we brought the idea to uh, to Grant and he was really interested and uh, this is uh, Grant behind me here and um, we had a bit of a discussion and uh, he thought oh we can uh, make this rifle a little bit better and uh, he's going to explain to all of us uh, what he's done to make this rifle better whether it be for your, your ballistics um, your accuracy whatever and the reasons behind he's done it as well so we took the ticker we took the 204 barrel out and we put a 28 inch uh, 1 in 7 twist in um, we went 28 inches to try and grab some more velocity. We've gone uh, a sort of a varm, tick of varmint profile so that you've got more stability and so the barrel doesn't heat up causing movement like the sporter profiles do they're using in the US. Um, we've bedded it into the stock to give it as much stability and no movement as it possibly can have. And yeah, we just wait and see how she goes once they pull the trigger on her now. But yeah, it should be good. Now when it comes to Sporter, which the, the US done all the stats on to the Varmint, um, why would you think the, the Varmint would be a better uh, barrel than the Sporter? It's a stiffer barrel, so you don't get as much whipped when you pull the trigger and you have the bullet and the, all the pressure and everything go down the barrel so it allows it to just 
stay stable, a lot more stable with a lot less whip in it. It's like quarter barrels are a lot more whippy. Yep. And um, yeah, so it should just be more stable, really. So being that little bit extra length in the barrel, what's the average feet per second gain you would assume? I would be hoping about 25 feet an inch yep. in gain in, off of this cartridge. Yep. Um, it's obviously cartridge orientated, how much velocity you're going to gain per inch. So it's just trial and error really, unless you're going to do all the mathematics behind it. So when it comes to the stock old boy, why did you pick Boyd stock? Right, with the Hunter stock that I got, which is a wooden stock through Tika, the varmint barrel was too large for the groove. There'd be nothing left the stock when the barrel went in. And I love my Boyd stocks, thumbhole stocks out of America. And I decided to make this rifle look the part. I would get the Boyd stock, which you see there in Coyote. As I said in the previous video, I will be doing vlogs all the way uh, through running how to run a rifle in. We've had a bit of a discussion with, um, with Grant and um, his, his advice us on the best way to run rifles in. We'll go through his way and we'll go through my old man's um, overboard way basically. Um, when it comes to my old man, he, he does not things on board, above board, uh, which is, you know, as you'll get to see through the, the stages, you'll, you'll realise this. Um, so once we've uh, run the rifle in, then we'll go into showing you how to actually sight a rifle in as well. Finding your correct loads, etc. Now, um, I can't recommend these guys any higher. Um, when we came in here with the idea, uh, I think while Dale was talking to Grant, he got on the phone or the intent straight away, ordered the ream up before we even walked out the door. Now, these guys uh, have got some amazing passion in what they do and it's very hard to find these days. So uh, whether it's Wildcats, repairs, uh, he really loves doing barrels, so if you want new barrels, uh, these guys are, are where it's at and I uh, can't think, you know, can't thank them anymore. Uh, the only thing we're, we're waiting for now is the brass to turn up from the States. We'll load a few up and then the next time we see you, we'll be down the range. Alright guys, till next time, cheers, good luck.